welcome back to always cassandra so today we're gonna do something a little different i have one of my mommy friends here kara um we're gonna just go back and forth we have some questions where we just want to discuss being like millennial moms um black moms caribbean moms so we're gonna try to dig into a lot of those things today um if you guys like the video comment subscribe if you have any more questions just go ahead and add them um in the comment section okay so kara go ahead and introduce yourself hello everybody i am kara i am 30 years old and i am a mom of one okay i hope y'all heard kara <laughs> All right, and as you already know, um, I have four children. Kara's son is seven. Yes. So a lot of the stuff we can discuss are really gonna correlate. I mean, she's been a mom of a boy much longer than I've been a mom of a boy, so she knows way more about parenting boys than I do. So you wanna start with your first question, Kara? My first question is, when did you involve God in your parenting was he there from the beginning or was did he come to Christ later that's a good question um when I had my first when I had Shalom I was not we were not married yet we were engaged so he was there because obviously I met Roland in church but I don't think I got really serious about making um being intentional with god being a part of my parenting until shaman was like maybe two or three and i could not get you know where everybody's like the terrible twos i needed more jesus during the terrible twos so i need i started to pray more consistently for her around that time and seek him more for like how to develop her how to deal with certain things when it came to my parenting or what i believe was okay because like my mom my mother was not saved so a lot of her parenting was whatever she felt that's how she parented and that you um if you are saved you understand that we cannot deal from our flesh we cannot parent from our flesh because then we create these little monsters for a lack of better words we create monsters that now the world has to deal with or we depend on the world to fix what's your answer i actually came to christ much much later in my journey um and that was <laughs> oh my gosh i wish i had involved him from the beginning yes because it's such a different experience when you're parenting with the bible as a blueprint versus mm -hmm. just doing whatever I think it's made a difference in my parenting. I've always been very conscientious, but it's helped the most with like just peace. Yeah, man. Just peace because there's only so much you can control as a parent, and I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to know that it's in God's hands, it, it really helps me to relax and kind of enjoy Him better. Yeah, man. Yeah. You start to look at them as, you don't look at them as a burden when you start to involve him because then you realize there's more of an assignment with being a parent. So yeah, it's cool. And where, if you hear the kids screaming, we decided to take them to the park. It was way easier because they're in front of us to watch them and talk than to record in the house and have all this screaming and then y'all was going to dislike the video. So yeah. So my first question is, what are three things you refuse to do in your parenting? Um, now with this question, does it mean something that like, I do now that I never used to do? Or? Either uh, either way, like if it's something that you did before and now you're like, I refuse to do that. Okay, okay. All right, the first thing I refuse to do was I refuse to let him run the show in my house <laughs> i refuse i refuse because uh, and i've seen i my background actually is like parenting wise i came from the whole attachment parenting philosophy gentle parenting philosophy and i've seen some things with that community that started to connect with more people i realized it didn't resonate with me that's good i don't think that a child should be running the house i think the parents should be enforcing boundaries in a loving safe way god enforces boundaries Amen. with us in a loving safe way so Amen. i i want to parent like god i want to be like god the second thing i refuse to do is um i refuse to send him to somebody's house that i don't know and 
we don't shake hands, we don't like talk. If I don't know this person, I'm not going to allow my child over. It's a safety issue. There are people, there are all kinds of people in this world. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you just gotta be safe with your kids. And the third thing I refuse to do, I refuse to be detached, right? I'm a, I, I want to be involved. I want to be um, a consistent parent. I want him to, to to feel like my mom was there and she was involved. So that's it. What about you? Um, so number one, I really like your um, the gentle parenting community. I did not come from the gentle parenting community. If you know me, I rule with the iron fist, if you know what I mean. I refuse to like continuously talk to them. I believe that speaking once should be enough. And if there's a problem with your hearing, then we're gonna take you to the ear doctor to figure out if you have a hearing problem because I'm not gonna speak constantly. So that's one thing I refuse to do, like constantly repeat myself over and over. Now I get it, even with God, he re he will say stuff to us and sometimes we have to go through that lesson over and over again but i just don't believe he constantly repeats himself after a while he gets quiet because it's like you've been through this lesson Jordan. you 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 we've been here all right so i don't like repeating myself when it comes to parenting um another thing is i do not believe that you should parent alone i'm very big on that i believe that we have a village for a reason god gives you people who love your children for a reason so when you take on this concept that you have to be the superhero you got to do everything by yourself you can't ask people you can't ask people for their opinion or their advice even when it comes to like a cold you know um karen and i are both from a jamaican background Coming from those backgrounds, Jamaican mothers, especially old school Jamaican mothers, don't really ask people for advice. Like, That's it true. comes unsolicited. That's so true. Bro. But they don't ask for advice. So <laughs> I didn't want to come off as like, I can't ask for advice or like, you know, me or my child is drowning in a situation and I won't ask anyone. I would rather let my pride, and we all know when we're dealing, when we're believers, we cannot let pride be anywhere in us. It cannot operate in us. So that's another thing I refuse to do, not ask for help, not seek out help, especially when I need it, or sometimes even seek out another's opinion because you, God may have brought you through the same situation I'm struggling with my child. And we don't go through things and we don't have testimonies just to have it. I refuse to allow my children not to um, take risks or take chances. Like growing up, if it seemed like something nerve wracking or whatnot, I was not daring as a child. Like I ain't really, I did not really test my mom. My brothers are gonna testify to something different or my mom would testify to something different. But I didn't like really believe in taking risks because I was like, why should I fail? Let me see somebody else fail and then I learned from that lesson. But with my kids, I try to teach them to take risks or take opportunities as they come because that's the only way you're gonna learn. That's the only way you're gonna develop your character. That's the only way that people can really meet the real you because you took a risk or you took a chance. Like, even if you know maybe tying my shoes this week is gonna be difficult, I still believe you can try. You need to try to do it. Even if you know I might fall off this bike this week, you need to try to ride the bike. You need to take the opportunity, take the risk. So yeah. That's great. Especially um, the parenting alone, I very, I, I agree with that 110 percent. And even I, like, I noticed that I'll get so overwhelmed and, and so upset and so stressed out with myself. But really, I could have just asked somebody for help. Come on, like it's not necessary. It's I, I didn't need to do all that. Yes. <laughs> and then you sitting down. God, why am I? He's like I. Do you see that village that you have? Like, granted, I understand some people don't always have as much as other people have. You know, some of us have grandparents, their grandparents, uncles and aunts and godparents. I get it. Some people may only have that one person or maybe two people. But I think it pertains to one of your questions, too, that you asked about how your church is supporting you. But, yeah, sometimes it's even a church who's offering to do like a date like the parents want to go on a date night we'll watch them sometimes our fear will prevent us from putting the church putting um our kids in an opportunity where they could grow granted sometimes you know test the spirit by the spirit if you feel some 
predator vibes, don't leave your child there. But if you don't, why not leave him for two hours so you can get a break? Why not? It's only two hours. <laughs> My next question would be, um, how has motherhood impacted your friendships? That's a good question. So amongst my friends, I would, I, yeah, amongst my friends that I went to high school with, college with, I was the first to have, um, well, no, I have one of my good friends had a baby right when we were um, our senior year. But as far as like in our 20s and stuff, I was one of the first to have a kid. So they were still able to travel. They were still able to go out. I mean, brunching wasn't really a thing back in early 2000s. Well, no, around 2012 when I had Shalom. It wasn't really a thing, but they could still do it. If they wanted to stay up and go to the club or stay up and um like drink. I, like, I don't drink, but I'm just giving you examples. Um, or if they wanted to have like a girls night or something, they could do it. For me, like, I'm married and I have a new baby at home. Like, that vibe, I can't do it anymore. So one thing that could not really, I felt like I had to, I felt like I forfeited my 20s because I had Shalom at like, I got pregnant at 25 and I had Shalom at 26. So I feel like I not really get to like it. I feel like I couldn't really enjoy my 20s at that point. Like I was right smack in the middle. Everybody else that felt like they were just living and to me it just felt like bomb. Here's a halt. I did a lot of separating too because I didn't understand like the shift that would happen from becoming a mom and even being a new believer because at the time when I had Shalom I had only been a believer I think for maybe four years. So I still was on my high judgmental riding out how dare you talk to me attitude and then I eventually did come down from it now I will say God did send a lot of women around me who had older children who were able to encourage me throughout the process and able to help me maneuver friendship maneuver marriage all into being a mom so yeah that's a blessing that's and what a shift right when you're a believer that God calls for some degree of separation. Amen. So it's, it's hard to navigate that space when you're a brand new mom because there's also another experience where you find yourself separated from other people. Yeah. And so, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Just praise God, like, he, you're, you're here now. So, yeah. Amen. He's, he's so good. How did yours change? Well, um, I wouldn't say I was like the most sociable person. So, <laughs> <laughs> I have one or two close friendships. And one actually had children before me. Okay, good. And the other one did not have any children. So it was interesting because once I became a mom, there was that degree of separation as well. But I grew closer to my friend who had the child yeah. versus the one that didn't because, you know, our lifestyles are different. And, you know, priorities are different. Even like the way we think these days is, is, is very different. I, I just pray for her. Um, and, uh, you know, we, it's still love. Yeah, that's all you can do. Because I know a lot of times being a believer and being a mom, people expect you to turn it off. They expect you to turn off being the believer when you're in the mommy groups and this, that, and forth. And it, it's I'm getting mature in Christ. Or even some people who are not, who have not even been believers long enough, they start to realize that. Like this decision to serve God with my whole life, this decision to be a believer, it's not something I turn off to please people. It's not something I turn off when I'm in my mommy groups. My light shines even when I don't think it's like appropriate. My light is gonna shine regardless. My prayer is that if you are a believer and you're a mom and you are watching this vlog, like I pray that God sends you other believer moms I pray that he sends you a community who has a clearer understanding and even have a desire to raise their children the same way you're raising your children biblically. Yes, that's right. The Bible says that we should not be unequally yoked. And that is becoming more and more important these days, especially mm -hmm. um, there's certain things going on in the schools mm -hmm. um, with you know the world and what they're doing with their children. And I believe, um, I listen to certain pastors and they, one of them says that, you know, there's going to be a collision between the church Amen. and the 
um, in the world, and I believe that. So it's really, really, really important that you have people to support you in your corner because a lot of times the world <laughs> is going to be the world. They're not going to support They're going to tell you to shut it down. Based off of what you're saying, I'm going to go into this next question. How do you keep the culture out, the culture of the world out of your parenting? I think you already know what I mean by that. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Um, can you keep the culture? <laughs> we, we try and we pray. Um, that's the first thing I I think I'll go into is prayer. Prayer is so, so important that you pray that God just covers yourself, um, covers your parenting, covers your child. Like, you know, just graces his ears that, you know, he's able mm -hmm. to hear the things that you're saying. Because there'll come a day when, you know, he doesn't want to listen. Um, so, and I'm going to be done. Like, it, it's just going to be all in God's hands. And Amen. Then, there's nothing else I can do. And um, I just, I try to teach him about the word. The word uh, We study every week. Um, we sit down and we'll read like, a, you know, a, a, maybe a chapter or two. We'll have him to try to explain it. Um, and then what we'll do is um, we'll explain it to him in a way that he mm -hmm. can understand just to try and build that foundation um and even if he doesn't quite understand i feel like it's good to continue to keep talking about it because one day it will all come yep. in a way that's relevant for him my prayer is that guides him to to have a relationship with him in his own way in an organic way not the way my mom did or my dad yeah. did, does it but you know the way he is supposed to have he's supposed to connect with god so that's my my prayer and um as far as keeping really the world i i really try to limit the amount of time that he spends watching certain shows yes. i i really don't there are a lot of things out there that are very suggestive um, mm -hmm. it's not christian like it's not of god it's confusing Good. so i i don't i don't have him watch a lot of those things so. as far as you were saying with the tv shows i'm gonna start there there are a lot of tv shows um especially cartoons now where legit promoting the LGBT movement, they're promoting the let your kid decide what sex they're gonna be, they're promoting explicit behavior like it's okay for young girls to be engaged in like um just things that are completely inappropriate. I can't see how anyone can explain to me how as far as believers, because if you if you um follow my um follow me on Instagram or if you watch my YouTube channel, you understand very clearly that I'm a believer, point blank period. So I don't make any apologies to that. And that is how I live my life. That is how I choose to raise my children. That is how I choose to um, engage in the friends that I pick for, or, or the people that I choose to be around my kids. So that's how I that's just how I choose to live my life. And I know to some people they're like, Well, what's wrong with them? Listen, to me, I don't believe that the same fight, you know what, I mean, I'm not even going to say that because it's going to rock some boats. Maybe one day I'll get into that. But I don't believe that we should, the same way that the world does not want us to push Christianity on them, the world should not be able to push their beliefs, what they think is okay on our children, period. That's just how I believe it. I can't tell you who to love, who to marry, when you can and cannot kiss your loved one, whether or not you should adopt children. I don't get involved in those things. I don't think it should be up to the world to distinguish whether or not my child wants to be a girl or wants to be a boy. That is never going to be okay in my book. Never going to be okay. I'm never going to be okay with the fact of in kids' cartoons now to quote-unquote represent they're putting two dads or two moms because they're trying to represent the kids who are into that now or kids who are a part of those families granted there are some children who are part of those families but for you to say everyone has to watch this every network has to do it i just believe it's a, an assignment of the enemy and our job as believers are to protect our children period protect our children so when it comes to like what they watch on TV, there's sh there's shows my children don't even know the names of because I just don't introduce it to them. I just don't. It's not that I'm like I want to be mean to them or I want to be mean to the creators of the show or however people are going to perceive it when they watch this video. It's just I don't believe that goes along the lines of how God wants me to parent my child. So I just don't go with it. 
period. And then as far as like other areas of keeping the, the culture of the world out, my children, I don't, um, I don't, <laughs> no, 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 it's not that, it's because of COVID. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these kids got a lot of personality. Jesus. But um, another way that I um, I make sure to like help my kids to distinguish what honors God and what doesn't is just teaching them that. We teach them what honors God and what does not. Like Kara said, that was really powerful. At one day, they are going to have to make their own decisions. Like I, we can't hold their hand forever, you know. Like they're going to reach a point. Um, expect, me and Kara about to uh, face preteens in a little bit. We're like four years out from dealing with preteens. There's going to there's gonna come a point where maybe Shalom is going to want to listen to, like, um, I'm not even going to say no names, spin no blame. They're going to want to listen to a rapper or something where the music does not glorify God. I am not going to choke them or grab their neck and say, what are you doing? Let's no. Nope. I'm a firm believer in the scripture that says train a child up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. So they may have a season where they may not be into listening to gospel music. They may have a season where they don't want to go to church. But at, as far as I'm concerned, as far as you're in my house, we all going to serve the Lord. Right? We all going to serve the Lord. And I know this is a... Um, um, I get this question from time to time. So what would you do if Shalom or Shaba or Naomi or Levi or even he would come home and tell you that they're interested in someone in the same sex? I'm going to believe that what we taught them while they were children, I'm going to believe that God is going to cover them. I'm going to believe that they know the truth. And even if they walk into it, I'm going to firmly stand and trust that God will lead them out of it. And if they decide to continue to walk in it, that's right. You let, know, that's true. That's so true because you have to remember, this is their journey. God, yes. the way God had developed us, you know, he's going to develop, develop them. And, you know, we, we can't shield them from every from life. From yeah. What's going to happen. All we can do is keep talking to them about the word, praying with them, and setting up that foundation so that, you know, when they go out into the world, they will remember that they'll have something to reference. Yes. That's the whole point of letting your light shine. Could you imagine if God, every day, he's like, come, Kara, this is what you're eating for breakfast. Come, Kara, this is what you're eating for lunch. Kara, you're not going to say that. Kara, you're going to say this. No, he made it. We have free will. And the same way we have free will, our children have free will. So we choose to serve God. So my prayer is that when I release them into his hands, he's going to not only cover them and protect them, but he will lead them and guide them. And that they will allow Holy Spirit to reign in them. So the same checks I get in my system, they will get those same checks in their system. So, again, for anybody who's even going to come in the comment section and make those comments, but what if your child's gay? <laughs> That's it's not even something I even think about because I believe that even if the enemy tries to push that agenda on them, I do believe that the foundation that we are building for them is going to tear that down. So, yeah. Uh, well, my next question for you would be, how do you manage your life? It's working. What's not working? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Like nothing's working. Can I be real? Like some days I get up and I'm like, ooh, I don't think I got anything done today. I didn't clock in and do the people's job because I still work. I don't feel like I accomplished anything. But even on those days, I try to focus more on um accomplishing at least one thing. And even if I don't accomplish it, it's fine because God does not operate in perfection. He doesn't. That's that's not his will concerning our life operating in perfection so i don't even focus on that what i'm trying to do more now is take it one day at a time honestly take it one day at a time navigating life from having two children to now having four that's kind of you know what I'm <laughs> yes that's a big jump and you know what you do is so like from my perspective you seem to do it so gracefully you really do like you are an Excellent, y'all. Beauty is in the eye. Excellent. Beauty Excellent. is the eye of the holder. Okay. <laughs> Some 
some days when people compliment me or say stuff, I do take it gracefully. I just say, you know what? All glory goes to God because if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for the God, it's the Holy Spirit. I don't know how I would navigate. That's why I kind of don't have an answer for that. If it was not for Holy Ghost, I don't know how to navigate life. I don't know how to do it. There are times where, like, I can't even figure out what to cook and I can just hear a small, soft voice, oh, cook this. And I'm like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Or um, I, something happened at school and now it's time to discipline Shalom or Shalom. And I'm like, I don't even know what to say. And sometimes I hear him say, give him grace. Like this time, just have a discussion with them about it. So that's kind of how I navigate through life. Legit is through Holy Spirit. How do you do it? I think it's the same way. Yeah. The same way. Like, you know, I am working, you know, on... <laughs> my walk with God to like let go as I yeah. said earlier I'm a control freak so <laughs> there I, I'm, I'm trying to become more open to God and let him just kind of lead me lead me in dealing with um my son lead me in dealing with my husband just really just help me to you know mm. just walk I feel you so because the whole that's one of the things that as believers makes us different from other believers of other faiths or even just people who don't even believe in any form of a God. Um, what makes us different is we are not dependent on our own strength because by our strength, we can't, we couldn't stop. We can't stop world hunger by our strength. We can't stop homelessness by our strength. We can't stop a house from being on fire. We can put or use different tools to stop it. But as somebody's house is burning down in the spirit or somebody's house is burning down through the, their marriages, burning down or different things are happening. Our own strength cannot stop it we must be dependent on God to do it so as a mom and as a millennial mom especially and as a believer mom you have to become so dependent on Holy Spirit to lead and guide you through what you should say to your children, how you can deal with your children, where to bring your children, where not to bring your children, what to allow your children to eat you know and I'm not just talking about physical food I'm talking about what comes through these gates and their ear gates and their mouth like what to do with your children because on our own strength we cannot do it that's why you have so many parents who just legit give up you know they give up because they're trying to do it on their own strength they're trying to do it how grandmom do it did it or how they read it in a book and let me tell you something i'm not against parenting books by a long shot i think they're very helpful but at the same degree, your child is not the child of the doctor from that book. So just keep that in mind. That doctor's child may have um, more access to different things to help their kids, you know? And some of us, financially, that may not be our um, situation. Or educationally, that may not be our situation. So we cannot try to parent our children always based off a book. You can try, but there's going to be some lessons that you're going to have to skip because guess what? Timmy ain't. He ain't applying by that, you know? It's just not gonna work for him, so. So true. And that was a lot of the issues that I was running into as a mother of color in these gentle parenting, primarily white <laughs> spaces, because, yes. um, you know, the way we navigate life is, is different. And so, you know, they would say, well, according to the book, you have to do X, yeah. Y, and Z. But it's like, okay, but my child is, you know, wasn't created when that book was being written. Yep. Like, that, that, you know, I need a different manual yep. for my child. Yeah. <laughs> and the best manual, legit, is the Bible. the Bible. That is the best manual when it comes to parenting children. God has given us your number one manual is the Bible. I, I'm going to do a video on, I found this article in, I think, Home Life or Good Life or something. Some women's magazine where it gave you nine scriptures that help with parenting so yeah I want to do a video on that and those were scriptures that believe it or not even an atheist uses them and does not realize it is a scripture it's a moral it's a moral and then people just like oh that's just no it came from scripture a lot of our morals a lot of the ways we live our life is based off of biblical scripture somebody else may paint it differently or take a word or add a word so then they're like oh i don't have to make it sound like the bible but it is scripture that's how we raise them and if we go back to what karen and i were just discussing with allowing holy spirit to lead you He's, he already knows your child before you. He knows them better than you know them. Right. Better. So if you're like, 
dang, he's not listening. Holy Spirit is like, remember last week I told you, your child does not respond to yelling. They don't respond to that. So if you continue to yell, you're going to block your child from receiving from you. So let me go to another question. We probably can take like, I'll do a question and Kara can end. And then we're definitely going to do, as long as it's okay with Kara, we're definitely going to do a part two because this is, I love talking to um, Kara about biblical parenting. I actually met Kara on a funny story off of a Facebook mommy um, not even a Facebook mommy group. It was a Facebook um, group where we all I'm not even really sure what group it is because it's controversial to some people but we all have a, a certain belief when it comes to parenting so she posted about requesting for a, um, a medical provider who still believes in the same things we believe in and I responded to her post and it's been like a, a year a year now we've been friends a year. So, yeah. I don't think I was pregnant. No, it's, yeah, before you were pregnant. So, it's going on a little bit over a year. Yeah. So, yeah, and we actually click. Um, we have different parenting styles because, like Kara said, she's extremely gentle. There's things I admire about her and I take to her. I may not even tell her because, like, Kara doesn't scream. She does not scream when it comes to him. But when he looks at his mother, okay. The joke stops. Already <laughs> it already stops. So I admire that about her, and I have taken some of the things I've seen she does with parenting her son. I take it and I um kind to kind of um, maneuver it or work it for my kids, and it's been working. So God will send you godly mother friends if you pray for it. He will send it to you, and he, um he will let you know when it's somebody in disguise. Okay, so. My next question, what scripture would you say is the focus of your parenting style? Uh, that's a great question. And um, I'm trying to think. There are so many scriptures to focus on. It's, it's hard to pick one. Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 28. All things, good and bad, work together for the glory of those who love God. And for me, that place is coming, that, that scripture is coming from a place of where I was when um, I had my son. And I felt like, it was, for me, it was bewildering. Um, I, had, I had gone through some things, and so coming out of that, I really hold on to the scripture. I really hold on to its promises for me. Amen. What about you? That's, that actually is my favorite scripture. Hands down. My favorite scripture. But I need to, I'm probably going to add it to the screen because I forgot where to find it. But it says, let me, let me get your Bible app because now I have to, now I have to tell you guys where to, ooh, Kara, you need to check, you need to check your emails. There's so many <laughs> emails in there. It's not here. No, I'll go to the internet. It's okay. I'll go to the internet. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm going to go to the internet. Ephesians 6 and 4. I'm going to read it from the um, New King James Version. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. I love that scripture because I believe a lot of, especially Caribbean parents, um, especially black parents, minority parents, I won't just... All parents, because I've seen Caucasians do it too. All parents, sometimes we will provoke the child or irritate the child, and then we come off with this whole high and mighty of do as I say and not as I do attitude, and that doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work for your relationship with God, and our, our parenting, like Kara was saying, it should mirror his um, parenting with us. Our parenting should mirror that. So that doesn't work with God. It doesn't work when you're at somebody's job. Imagine how many jobs you left because somebody had the attitude of, you're going to do as I say. <laughs> so why do you think your child is going to listen to that? Why do you think your child is going to respond to that? Like, we should parent our child, parent our children with love from always a place of love because our father parents us from a place of love. He does not parent us from a place where... I'm going to beat you every time you open your mouth. Uh, you cannot have an opinion. You must do it this way. So why do we do that with our children? Like the scripture says, um, but bring them up in the training and the understanding of the Lord. 
in everything we do with our parenting, it has to be based off of your foundational relationship with Christ. So if you're struggling in an area or you don't know how to parent your child in the area, you got to get help. This is why we go. This is one of the reasons we go to the church building. It helps us. It should. Yeah, it should. It should. <laughs> it should be helping us when it comes to parenting or rearing our children in a way that honors God. Some people believe that, you know, just going to church is not going taking your child to church is just not enough, you know? And then you go home, you cussing, you fussing, you smoking, you drinking, you always high, you always drunk, you and your spouse or your significant other, y'all always in there fighting, but every Sunday y'all take them babies to church. And every um, prayer meeting, y'all in there, those kids can see through them. They can see through your nonsense. And they, and that's how you end up getting kids who are like, if this is what it's like to be a Christian, I want no parts of it. No parts of it. So I, I firmly believe that when you're raising them and you struggle in the area, ask God for help. Ask God plead like um Jacob tangled all night with the angel, angel you right. need to do that when it comes to your parenting my father I'm not moving until I get a response on how to deal with this my child is struggling father in school and I don't know how to help them or my child is struggling with their identity or my child is angry God and because um for a lot of us we were um we were, may not have been raised in a home that was focused on Christ, you know? So we came up in anger. Now, some of us, we don't act out on it, but then that stuff passed down the, the generational bloodline, you know? We're gonna talk about deliverance maybe in the next video. But um, it passed down the generational bloodline, so now your child angry and you can't scream at them. All it does is it's like a fire. You're just igniting it more. So you need to go to God and ask him for help. So that's, that's my favorite scripture when it comes to parenting. Amen. Last question for tonight, because as you can see, it's getting dark, and it is a Sunday. We got to get these kids ready for school. My last question is going to be, how are you? That's a good question. I, when I read it, I was like, I understand what she meant, but <laughs> um, a lot of times, people don't ask moms, especially I know I keep referring back to it, but this is our background, especially Caribbean. They don't ask us how, how you doing with parenting. They just paint this picture like we got to be strong. Yeah. We got to be strong. And that's not that goes back to you got to be totally dependent on. Excuse me. You got to be totally dependent on God. So there are days where I am not OK with parenting. There are days where I legit regret. <laughs> All right. That's that's I that's regret being real. It. I'm like, dang, maybe if I would have got married at 32, I probably would have just had, like, I do have moments like that. I do have days like that, like, bro, four kids, four kids, four different personalities, but, and then I have really, really great days, really, really awesome days of like, man, I enjoy being a mom, man, so how are you? Girl, I'm, I'm living by God's grace. Amen. Every day. Um, it's, it's different every day. Every day. But you know what? I feel I feel there's peace in my heart. Amen. So, um, you know, what more can I ask for? Even if you feel like you caught a fail or you got an L that yeah. day. That peace of God... Just like the scripture says, that peace of God will surpass this all understanding. Like, if you can pray for that for anybody, like, even if you don't know what to pray for for someone, always pray for them to have the peace of God to rule in their heart. Because I'm telling you, that can make them overcome anything. It really can. It helps people overcome anything. So, again, I like, I thank you guys so much for watching our, for my first series of Millennial Christian mommyhood um, i think that's what i'm gonna name it i don't know i may not so don't hold me to it i don't know i have to write it down and see if it correlates if it works so um you want to go ahead and pray us out here all right sure father in heaven i thank you for this day i want to thank you for the opportunity to get together with my good friend cassandra i love she's such a blessing father i pray for her family i pray for children that you just, you just continue to guide them and help them and pray for her and her husband, Logan, that you help them 
and to be able to connect and, and just, just keep that strong, all these strong marriages to marry to the children so they know what it is. Hallelujah. Um, I pray for, um, I just pray for them in this week. Um, I pray that you keep them safe from COVID. I pray that you keep them to, you know, just, just, just guide them, Father. Just, just be with them, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, pray, I pray that you be with my son and, and, and us. And I just, I just pray for um, just peace and understanding this week as we uh, start out the movie. Just be with us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thanks again, Kara, for joining us. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys again.